Um, welcome. This is the third meeting for the R4DS Book Club for Data Visualization with R. And today we'll be going over Chapter 3, Univariate Graphs. Um, the learning objectives are to describe graphs for visualizing the distribution of a single categorical or quantitative variable. Um, so what are categorical and quantitative variables? Um, so these are definitions I got. I forgot where I got them, honestly. But so categorical, some of it is actually it's straight from the book, I think. Categorical yeah. or qualitative data are descriptive and can be grouped into meaningful themes or categories. The distribution of a single categorical variable is typically plotted with a bar chart, a pie chart, or less commonly a tree map. And quantitative data are countable or measurable and can be analyzed using statistical analysis. And the distribution of a single quantitative variable is typically plotted with a histogram, sorry, kernel density plot or a dot plot. So, and yeah, just kind of um, restating it. So you have two types of data, qualitative, quantitative, qualitative descriptive information has labels, quantitative numerical values and information. And then quantitative can also be like discrete, which are countable countable data values or continuous where it's something that's measured. Um, so the data set that we'll look at for this chapter is the marriage data set and it comes from the mosaic data package. It contains the marriage records of 98 individuals collected from a probate court in Mobile County, Alabama. So first um, for qualitative data, um, we look at the bar chart and the bar chart is used to display the relationship between a numeric and a categorical variable. Um, and throughout the presentation, I have some links that'll show like a little bit more about the different charts, but I'll probably go through that a little later. But yeah, so like with this using ggplot2, you do the usual ggplot, um, ggplot like syntax where you have your, your data set and then within the aesthetics, you would set your, your x value and if it was more if it was like bivariate your x and y but here um data set is marriage and our x value is race and then mm -hmm. to make the bars you just add geome bar to it and okay. this is like yeah this is like the basic graph for a, a bar plot so then we also have pie chart where a pie chart is a circle divided into sectors with each um each portion represents a, oh, each sector represents a portion of the whole. And so ggplot2 didn't actually have like a way to like, they don't have a geom for um, bar charts themselves. You actually have to make like use geom bar and then add this thing called chord polar. So right. yeah, so yeah, so you start to create the bar chart. First, you kind of have to do some like data manipulation so you take the data set and you count the races and then arrange it in descending order of the races and mutate it so that the proportion is, um, I guess, yeah, well, then you mutate it, create a proportion and then a label for that, or that's not like, I'm not sure what that line means, honestly. Um, no, it's fine. Honestly, this is <laughs> yeah. I need to redo some of this. Um, yeah so then yeah so then and all that, of this yeah. all of this we're assigning mm -hmm. to this new data set called plot data so and it's yeah it's just mute it's just um wrangled data from like the marriage data set so then yeah. we put it in ggplot where plot data is our data set um x i think i forgot why they do that for x or actually yeah I'm really bad at reading this. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what you No, bad. you're not bad. <laughs> you're, I mean, this is very complicated yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and I don't think we um, we learned this. Like, I mean all of it, yeah. It's kind of like um a lot of it is like D plier stuff, and honestly, I'm yeah. not good with that. But yeah. Don't, yeah, okay. don't worry, dude. I mean, it's not <laughs> yeah. It's, so, it's yeah sorry yeah. my my yeah. friend actually who just graduated from lsu her job is using tidyverse in r mm -hmm. and they're yeah. very patient with her she's not familiar with that 
So, yeah. I mean, I think this is all very complicated sh- shit. Oh. Sorry, shit yeah, that we're yeah. doing. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Yeah. Um, but anyway, sorry. Okay. Actually, I do see what they're doing a little. Okay, so yeah. So this, with the mutate, what they did is they created a new variable called prop, and they took it the number of times 100. Some of, um, basically, they're getting the proportion yeah, they're getting the proportion of like the whole and um, making it like part of the hundred. So yeah, so the Y is that variable that was created and then the fill is race. So then yeah, um, fill is race. So yeah, and again, you add the geom, um, the geom bar because um, again, there's no like geom pi or anything to make a pi for um, geom bar stat identity here i think that has to do with what um what femi was talking about last time and i think that's why there's no x i want to say or it's just there's no x because it's not like a it's probably no x because it's a by a pie chart um and then the color is black i only thing i could think of is that's the lines actually yeah that is the lines and then we do the chord polar again to make it so that it is um we make a pie chart there's probably more information you can get about this in the ggplot2 book i'll probably add a link to that later in my notes um theme void i think theme void takes away the usual background that would be like you'd have normally on a ggplot output like this is like the normal background so theme void i think that removed that background because it kind of wouldn't make sense for the pie chart. Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, and then some caveats for pie charts. So pie charts are controversial in statistics. And so if your goal is to compare the frequency of categories, you're better off with bar charts because humans are better at judging the length of bars than the volume of pie slices. And if your goal is to compare each category with the whole, um, for example, such as what portion of participants are his- Hispanic compared to all participants, and the number of categories is small, then pie charts may work for you. Um, and it's a bit more code to make an attractive pie chart in R. Yeah, like that comparatively to like the by um, the bar chart, that was a lot more code. <laughs> yeah. So then there's also tree maps, which are an alternative to pie charts, um, and they display hierarchical data as a set of nested rectangles. And unlike pie charts, tree maps can handle categorical variables that have many levels. So basically, like with the levels, it would be like if within race there were like levels, you can't really see that within the pie chart kind of thing. Um, and then each group is represented by a rectangle, and which area uh, area is proportional to its value. So here we have the um, code for the tree map. And you actually need a new library called Tree Mapify. So first you would have to do install that packages, Tree Mapify, like within um, quotes, and then call the library Tree Mapify. And then to create it, um, to create a tree map, um, again, we have to kind of wrangle the data a bit. So we have this plot data variable or plot data data frame that we get from the marriage data set. And we wrangle to get like the count of official title, I guess yeah and then the ggplot um using plot data so the aesthetics is filled with the official official title i feel like i'm not saying that right no you are i have like oh, <laughs> it's like the person who like does the marriage kind of like who yeah I, yeah i've heard that i've heard like like officiate but yeah that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then <laughs> Areas equal to n, so basically that's the area of the like the rectangle itself, and then so tree mapify gives you this tree map, the geom tree map, and then here they add a label, the title of it is equal to marriage by officiate, and that's right there at the top. You see? Yeah, no, I see it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then, Very interesting. Yeah. yeah, I actually I guess I have heard of tree maps, but yeah, I've never. Made personally made one in um ggplot 
Yeah, me neither. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's interesting to see. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So next we have a histogram, and it's used to study the distribution of a single quanti quantitative variable. So yeah. So we're skipping from the qualitative slash categorical now to the quantitative, and then this is some code to plot the dis age distribution using a histogram. So again, ggplot marriage and aesthetics is where x is age and let me go back so this one yeah so this one where aesthetics was official title that's a category rather than like a number and even the other ones i should just do that yeah where what we were doing race that's a category rather than a number so here we have like the histograms we're using something that's a number like age is a discrete this discrete number so we're um like counting things so yeah so marriage data set aesthetics where x is age which is yeah quantitative and then you add geome histogram so honestly you could just to get the histogram you literally could just have that those lines of code but here they've added added some labels where the title you see above the graph participants by age and then for the label for x is equal to is the label is age and yeah again so here you see it's count data so next we have a kernel density plot and um, it's an alternative to a histogram um, a density plot also shows the distribution of a single numeric variable um, with density plot so here i guess technically it's like it is a yeah, alternative to the, the histogram where they're good for, like histograms are good for pretty much um, count data. You wouldn't really want to do continuous data with them, but a density plot would be good to do continuous data because they're not necessarily binned. Um, and I'll talk about bins a little later, but basically the bins are like here, you see these, like each of these is kind of like, a, um, one of the age groups. So this one is like 20, that one is 40, just doing the ones that are actually on a line. So I know which one is, this one should be 70 because each of these, each of these lines is 10. So it goes from like 10 to, I think it doesn't go all the way to 80, but yeah. So these like counting the number of participants um, within each age group so that these are the bins. Um, Default is 30. Um, it talks more about it in the book. I didn't add it to the notes, but it talks a bit more about it in the book. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so then with a kernel density plot, it doesn't have like the specific bins, but rather it's, um, yeah, with the density plot, like the height of it, like would correlate with like, um, well, this one again, density versus like a count, but yeah. So that's kind of the difference, but you'll see like basically they have somewhat the same shape, like vaguely it's the same shape. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was the same thing, married aesthetics X where X is age and geom density. And then again, yeah, they gave you the title. Okay. Yeah, that's. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, if you have any questions about it, just let me you feel free to download. Okay, cool. Thank so, you. Yeah. No worries. And yeah, another alternative to the histogram is the dot chart. And so yeah, here we do. And again, this is kind of basically the same. These been the histogram density plot and dot chart. We've been plotting the same same variable in each of these. So again, data set is marriage aesthetics where X is equal to age. And then we use geom dot plot. And then again, they added some labels where title is participants by age, the, the Y is the proportion, um, and then the age is equal to um, X's age. Where, yeah, so basically each of, so I guess this is rather a proportion versus, well, no, these are still counts, I believe. Yeah, each of these should be counts. I should have checked that before, but I believe in general with the, yeah, it should be counting, even though they have that thing where it's the proportion. Yeah. 
okay and yeah you see again these all have like vaguely the same shape because it's like it's the same data you can see it right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah no, i see it yeah I see. Uh, then, yeah so then within like if you in the book they showed like a lot of variations of the different charts um like doing like with they would add fill and color to the bars where fill fills in the the shape the oh sorry fill fills in the color within like the bar or in the pie piece well not they didn't do it with the pie pieces but like within like the density plot or something and the color function is for the border rather than like the color inside and then like yeah with like his with the histogram you have like bins and bin width where bins controls the number of bins into which each numeric variable is divided. So that one, I'm pretty sure for bins for the histogram, it just did like one each. It was kind of be, well, yeah, like at most they could have divided it by like one age, but potentially they could have had it where like ages 20 to 25 is a bin, ages 40 to 45 is a bin kind of thing, instead of doing it for each individual age kind of thing um and then that's the low number of pins and then controls or actually i think that would have more so been bin width um but yeah you can well okay yeah so bins controls like you choose a specific number and then bin width would have been um choosing how like yeah the width of the bin so that would be like 20 to 25 or like if you chose bins, it would have been like, you just want two bins. <laughs> um, wouldn't make too much sense, but you could do that um, for that particular chart. And then this thing, BW, I forgot what it stood for. I think it was like bandwidth, I wanna say, but it's specifically for the kernel density plot and it controls the smoothness of it. Like potentially, like if you look at the kernel density plot, like it doesn't necessarily have all the peaks and valleys that you saw on the histogram, but you could change it so that it was like more ragged and like each of the dips, it does like each of them, or you can make it so it's like way smoother because it just been like gone up and like gone down. So that's something you can change with the BW option. Is that band and about this bandwidth? Yeah, I think that's you what think it was. Bandwidth? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. And I'll probably do a little bit of like live coding at the end to kind of you could play around with like the stuff that was in the book. Yeah. Um yeah. And then I also added some other resources. So for more information about the geoms, you can visit the tidyverse page for ggplot2. And then they there they'll have information about like the the geoms that were featured in this chapter, like for geom bar, geom histogram, geom density, geom dot plot, and geom tree map. Well, geom tree map is not part of ggplot2, but I added that one as well. And then also, like you saw that we they talked about like the titles and labels a lot. So to, for more information about those the titles and annotations, you can visit ggplot2 elegant graphics for data analysis the book and it's in chapter eight annotations. So I I could do some live coding first to go through the stuff that was in the book. And then I could show you like the different um, resources or yeah. whichever, would you wanna see the resources first or coding? Coding, coding. Okay, cool. Yes. Let yeah. me switch my screen. Okay. So, okay. So you can see my R Studio, right? I was muted. Sorry. Yeah, oh. this, this is awesome. Like the yeah. way. Um, oh. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can I can do some of the code that was in the book that I didn't show. Uh, okay. I just you my screen might pause for a bit. I'm just going back between the different screens. Okay. Yeah, no, this is beautiful. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here we have, so yeah, so this was the code for like, oh God, what did I do? Oh God. Uh oh. 
let me redo that file edit redo sorry i really should learn the shortcut for redoing was that it hopefully okay i think that's it um okay back to the bar chart uh, bar chart okay so yeah i could have just pressed that before um yeah so this was the bar chart that i have in um in the slides it's the basic bar chart you have the data set you have the variable you're plotting and then you add geom bar like within the book they also show like with the color so like in my console i'm gonna add put the data that they like the code they have there mm -hmm. uh, hopefully this should show up in my okay nice. yeah, it shows yeah. Up in plot. yep okay it is yeah so it is the same it's the same chart but like they so they put a fill with cornflower blue so the fill is like within the bar itself and then they put color black and that's like the border color i think the default i'm not sure what the default border color would be i can't really tell it doesn't look like white it's in, white in the original one but possibly but yeah so just adding some pizzazz to the <laughs> to it <laughs> to it yeah uh, yeah black. let me look at this one yeah, I didn't want to have like too many slides on the book. So yeah, like, no. I can do live coding. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so on this one. Okay, so this was the code they had where this time they added the percents. So if you look at the original one, it does it by count. And then this one, it does it by percent. So it's not like the actual bars didn't change themselves but it's like the y-axis, like what it is, it's, yeah, it's in percent instead. So this one you see where they did like this line here, I don't know if you can see what I'm highlighting, but oh, like yeah. This, yeah, where it's like y is equal to dot dot count, dot dot slash sum of that. And let me see what they said in the book. Yeah, so they were saying the, the dot dot count is a special variable representing the frequency within each category. So yeah, even though like originally, like in the other one, we didn't have to specify an X, it just did the count. You do specify a Y. Oh, we didn't have to specify the Y because it just automatically counted it. Um, but in this one, we specify a Y so that our Y turns into a percentage rather than just count. And then we also added so we added the label for Y as percent. And then they're saying they added, use this package called scales to add like the percent marks there. Um, so yeah, scales Y continuous, labels is equal to scale percent. Um, that is that one. And then they also showed you how to, um, how to sort the categories, let me see. I'm gonna add that. So the first line of code, I'm gonna add two lines at the same time. I think if I do it separately, it's not gonna work. Okay, so the first one, the first one where we assigned plot plot data, which is the from the marriage data set, and you counted the race, um, like counted the number based on the race. And then we did the GD plot using that new data set. And then we reordered it with race by the number, like the number within it. So I think, yeah, so I think count race, now the N is like the number, like if you were doing it based on count, like white is, I forgot what the count or percent was, but it's significantly higher. So what we're gonna end up doing is doing it in like, ascending order you mean that looks yes okay so yeah so where the original the original chart is kind of just it was um it was ordered in alphabetical order american indian black hispanic white but this one we ordered it um in 
ascending order by the number like frequency yes. and then and then yeah labeling bars there's a lot of stuff here for bar chart uh yeah, labeling was, was... bars <laughs> let me do that one yeah so this one okay so this one they just added the counts on top um on top of each bar so frequency there's like one for American Indian and Hispanic, two for black, and then 74 for white. Um, yeah, I'm guessing there's total. Yes, yeah, so I guess the total of it, it was, they all added up to a hundred. This is data. Yeah. And then no, I cannot count. That's not a hundred. <laughs> um yeah, so that was what they did with this code. So again, you have plot data where x Whoa. is equal to race and then y is again the count of the count um, that we did from that previous wrangling and then the bar stat is equal to identity um, and geom text um, where the label is n which again is that like that count and then they added the, the labels where x is race y is frequency and again the title Okay. Um, so then there's this one, which is way more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, let me read what this one is. Okay. So this one ends up putting the bars in descending order. Yeah. So let me run this. Yeah. So here they called the library for scales. Seems like it was our oh you know I haven't been using it in the actual presentation so maybe I'll add it later to like the description but yeah so first they called the library scales um they again did some like data wrangling creating plot data where they hit the marriage um count of race and mutated where PCT I guess percent is equal to the n over the sum of n and the label. Let me run that first. And, oh. oh, what did I add then? Uh -oh. oh, that one did not work. I'm not sure why. I hate this troubleshooting, you know, is yeah. so another thing that. Can yeah. 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 Okay. I got no, it. I might have highlighted something else. <laughs> yes! Yeah. You got okay. it. Though. So I yep. think some of the things they did in this were okay. So the difference from the ones we saw before, this one's in descending order, and like how they have the label for the um the count up there. Now they have it as um they added a percent to it, so it's not just like the count itself. And yeah, I think that's one of the main differences. Also, they changed the color. Yeah, those are like the main differences I see there. And then they also did some stuff about like overlapping labels. I don't think, oh, because this one with the officiates. Okay, so with the one we have here, it's only four categories. So like there was nothing, there's no like overlapping of the labels in this one. But if you did the bar with officiate, where there was way more categories, uh, let's see, yeah. yeah, there was way more categories. So by default, the labels do overlap a bit. I think you could see it, right? Yes, yes, like yes, yes. The labels overlap. So then, yeah, so this one, where it's the code for it. So marriage data set where the X is official title with geom bar and they added the labels where x is officiate y is frequency and the title is marriages by officiate and let me see so then some of the fixes they have for it are flipping the x and the y axis axis um so this code that i just added is going to be for a horizontal bar chart yeah so that 
one way of getting rid of the issue because like then you have the words um like or well no they're still horizontal but yeah now they're on the y-axis so they're not overlapping mm -hmm. um and they did that um oh, by, yeah. yeah yeah they added like at the end of this code the only difference from this one and the other one is that they added chord flip at the end okay okay yeah so that was able to flip the axes and then another thing they did was um rotating the label let me see yeah they rotated the labels so yeah so this one you see like the labels are on an angle i want to say about 45 degrees it probably so yes they're a 45 degree angle and yep. yeah so it is nice. again that one from the yeah it's cool it the is one from like yeah. and clear too you know what i mean that's what i like about yeah yeah i think something i heard is like technically when possible not to do that with labels or at least not have them i think i guess this 95 degree angle is okay but like yeah. if you have them like going from like bottom to top like they're still like if x was still on or rather if the bars were still on the x-axis and then you had bishop like you had to like tilt your head to read it i heard don't do that <laughs> yeah but i think this with the 45 degree angle would be pretty good and like yeah you can read it like it's a fix so that you don't have to like put the like flip the axes exactly yeah so for this one, the difference between the first one and this one is they had a, added that line theme where axis.text.x is equal to element text and angle um, angle is equal to 45. Um, angle is equal to 45 and h just is equal to one. I think h just is like horizontal justification kind of thing. Um, but yeah, there's actually I could look this up. <laughs> Yeah, in help, yeah, if I look up theme and help, and I don't know if it will tell me about all of this stuff. It might not say all of it. Okay, I don't think it'll tell me specifically about H just, but, oh, now I should look at element text. Text. Okay. okay, yeah, so within, if you went to help and looked up element text, it'll tell you kind of like all about more of the stuff you can um, do with the text, which is like in this, the text is like the, the, here it's the axis. Again, this was like axis.text.x, so this is the text for the x axis um yeah so h just yeah horizontal justification between zero and one anyway. and then okay so we have that one and then another thing you can do with the labels bar toes so this one is going to be a bar chart with staggered labels. So like here, you still have the labels on the X axis. And instead of rotating them, they have them staggered. So like one is closer to the top than the other. Um, I've never done this personally. So it's kind of new for me. So if we look at the code, it looks like they have labels. Yeah, this is new for me. Honestly, but it looks like they added it. They added it in within the aesthetics of the actual plot itself. So yeah, that'll be something for me to look into a bit more. But it's possible, basically. <laughs> yeah, no, same. Yeah, same. Yeah. yeah. I really like this book because, like, even though like I read Gigi Plot two already, well, the majority mm -hmm. of it. Um, yeah, there's still so much to like learn from this book itself. It's like, exactly. Yeah. exactly. There is always so much to learn when it comes to coding and yeah. art and 
yeah yeah for sure so this one okay so i just added the code for the pie chart um it's this whole thing here and again i should be able to do the part up until the bar and give it a bar chart hopefully that works oh no still did a pie i think it just ran everything in the end I'm not sure why. Yeah, it looks like it's just going to run everything. But yeah, so this is for the pie charge. It's just not working. I had it and now it's gone. <gasps> okay, let me paste it again and try and run it. Okay, so yeah, so that's the one for the pie chart. I'm not going to attempt to like <laughs> explain all of what's happening but again it's like you to even get it to be a pie chart you have to start with geom bar and then you add cord polar to it yeah so i'm pretty sure in ggplot2 they also talk about it more probably within the um you can probably read up more about it in the information about geom bar but we'll go look at those in like a second Okay, so that is the pie chart. And yeah, so they have more stuff about doing labels and pie charts. But since we kind of already did that, I probably won't go through all of that. Then also about labels within the tree maps. Um, there's histograms. I'm just on the other screen looking at the stuff. Okay, I'm going to do the one with the histograms to show the difference with the bins. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay, so this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I just <laughs> added this one. I'll run this really quick. Okay, so this one, the difference between this and like the original one we saw is they did, they added, they changed the number of bins. So they put bins to 20 here. Um, yeah, so if you look at the code, it's Okay, so data sets merge, the X is age. Um, we have the histogram with the fill colors, corn flu blue, corn flour blue, the color of the border is white, and they added the 20 bins, and then they have the label, subtitle, and the X axis. So I put this on the line, another line again. This time I'm gonna delete the the part where it says bins. I'll run it again, and I should have taken out the. Oh, oh, hey, Femi, no, no worries. Glad you could join. Um, and yeah, so this is I just removed um where they specified twenty bins and disregarded the title, but you see it's different. Like the bars got like skinnier because there's more bars now. Yeah, so I can do it again and show you what it looked like just now with the 20 bins so you could see the difference again yeah so that's what it looks like with 20 bins versus the default ones which are i think are 30. and then also so they have it where there's like you can specify bin width and then okay so i'm gonna run the code for bin width and this one, they change it so like the bin width is five, um, or rather it's five years. So each of these, each of these bars um, is like, yeah, within five years. So none of them start exactly on a like a zero, but like say it would be like 20 to 25, or technically I guess it would be like 20 to 24. It's not in this graph, but like, yeah. So the five years, like 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 kind of thing um yeah so the difference between this and like the original like the original histogram we saw um well the colored one anyway like they added bin width is equal to five so potentially we could do it and have bin width equal to 10. and it makes the bins even bigger so yeah 
And then I guess I could have done that with, oh, been with. So yeah, this one is been with is 10. Um, I potentially could have done that with bins as well, show you what it's like to make it so there's like less, even less bins. Let me get it, um, or I could just do it in this way. Yeah, so this one I'm gonna show you where, okay, so this is bin width is equal to five, so, or is equal to 10. Um, so it gives you six bins there because it's just based on the bin width itself. This one I've made it, I've changed it. So we'll have five. Oh, it did not do what I thought it would. Ignoring the parameter. Huh. All right, it would not, not let me do five bins. Um, maybe if I do 40 bins, I guess. This is gonna let me do more bins. Oh, that's been with. Okay. Uh, but basically, you kind of get the idea of like the difference between um bins and bin with. And then the next thing they do. Okay, so again, in histograms, they show you like adding the percent labels, which we also did in like bar, like the bar plot. So there you can do it as percents instead of accounts and also add like the percent sign behind it. And yeah, I guess the difference in the code, again, where they add like the Y and using the dot, dot, dot count. Um, yeah, I don't know how to say that properly or if that's just how you say it. And then again, in the scale Y continuous labels is equal to percent. And then, okay. So also we had our kernel density plot from before. And I'll show you when they add the color. So, okay. So this is like our kernel density plot. If you remember the, like the one that I have in the book, it has, it's, it's not filled in at all. I believe it just has the line. So here we added, Still is equal to Indian red blue. And yeah, also you have the label where the title is participants by age. So let me see what else. And okay, also there's another thing. So yeah, we were asking about the the BW before where it did stand for bin with. And there's this code you can run to see. Oh, band bandwidth. There's code you can run to see what the default bandwidth is. And this one, I guess the default bandwidth is a little bit over five. So they have some code where they changed it and set the bandwidth to one. So that one is like not as smooth. So I guess the bigger the bandwidth the smoother it is. And this one is like way less smooth. Like, yeah. And then we have the dot chart. Do you remember the dot chart? And um, one of the edits they made to it was filling in the filling in the dots themselves. So Okay, if you look at the code, um, again, our data, data set marriage aesthetics where x is equal to age and the geom dot plot. And then within that, they put fill is equal to gold and color is equal to black, where fill fills in like the inside of the dot and then black is the border color. And then, yeah, again, we have our labels for the title of the y and the x. And, uh, okay, so that's actually all there was in the book itself i can show you some of the some of the resources that were that i found okay i'm gonna switch to my browser okay so yeah this is just the book itself um so yeah again all the code all the code for all the charts i just showed pretty much in here and then so yeah like what i was saying about 
being able to find more information from ggplot about like the specific geomes so, like you can do this and look find more information about geom bar and like all the options you can put within it because like yeah just yeah just a bit more information about the options you can do like bar with um other stuff like that and then so yeah so they have the geom bar geom we didn't go over about but the geom histogram geom density geom dot plot if you want more information about those there and then also there is the r graph gallery which um femi mentioned last week so that one you can come here you can click to find out more about the different chart types so like this one's the one i'm clicking on now is like a histogram Oh no, sorry, it was the density plot. Um, yeah, it tells you a bit more about density plots and like cool like other things you can do with the with G plot too. Um yeah, this one kind of looks like yeah, basic density plot. Um, and then you can customize it, make a mirror density plot. And yeah, our graph gallery is pretty darn cool <laughs> so yeah if you click on it you can find out more about how to do like a mirror density like it gives you some example code basically and can do that yeah it even shows you how to do that with a histogram as well so yeah for the chart types you just go to chart types and yeah so it'll show the density plot it shows a histogram it shows i don't think they had a dot plot here they do have the eye charts you can go to that I'll give you more information yeah so yeah the our graph gallery is a great place to kind of figure out how to do more um do fancier stuff <laughs> basically and then I think I have that and then also like the ggplot2 book definitely always a good place to go um if you go to one of the things they talk a lot about in this book was like annotations like all the labels and stuff so did you plot two if you come to chapter eight um they talk about like plot and access titles and even like adding um like annotations within the graphs themselves yeah so a lot of information on that and then also if you want to like um chapter 11 about color scales and legends it tells you a lot more about um like the stuff you can do with the color of your charts and stuff and also there is the um actually i might link to it in the slides there's also the book club that we did for gd plot too so they there's notes for this book so you wouldn't have to like go through the whole book itself but yeah so that's pretty much all i had for today I don't know if anyone had like any other questions about it. I could stop sharing or if anyone has anything else they want to see before I stop sharing. No, I think I'm good. Thank you so much, um, Lydia. Okay. Well, definitely check this out. I saw that I actually was looking at the website. It has those cheat sheets that um, mm. um, I used um, last semester when I was taking a stat computing class. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of good resources for this online. So definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Google yeah. is my best friend nowadays, I'm telling you. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I guess that is it for this week. Thank you guys for joining. Next week, Femi will be going over chapter four of the book, which is bivariate graphs. So okay. thank you and see you all next week. Thanks. See you. Okay. Have a Thanks. nice day. Bye. And good luck on your exam. Bye. We'll see you Thank next you. Week. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Bye. Yeah. Bye.